Hello and welcome back. Now that we have your computer all set up with Visual Studio Code, we can jump in and get started with developing your first web page. So this lesson is going to take you through creating a very basic web page and introduce you to some of the core concepts of how a web page is built using HTML code. So let's go ahead and get started. So what we're going to build today is we're going to build a small little web page that tells that you can let people know a little bit about you, maybe a school club or a hobby you like. For instance, I love music, so I might build a page about music. You might build it about cars or your favorite music group. OK, so we're going to get started by loading up Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to double click the icon. OK, once in Visual Studio Code, I'm going to go to File. I'm going to select Open Folder. In the dialog window that comes up, navigate to a good location to store your new project. Often the best place will be your Documents folder, but choose a location where you will remember to find it later. Once you have a location selected, you will want to create a new folder for your web pages. Click on the New Folder button. A new folder will appear. Change the name of the new folder to something you like. In this case, I'm going to use Choose to Code, and then click the Select Folder button at the bottom. When you return to code, you'll see you have your new website folder project. Here, I'm actually going to expand this a little bit, so we're going to go full screen so we can see a little bit better. So we have our Choose to Code folder. So it always shows right here what your working folder is. So we're going to be working inside the Choose to Code folder today. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and create a new file. So the way we do that, we're going to mouse over Choose to Code. We're going to move over the very first icon, which when you see when you move over it, you get an icon for new file. We're going to click that button, and then we're going to type in index.html. OK. Really, you could call the page anything, but most web pages start with an index.html as the first page. So it's a good idea to name the file this way. So let's go ahead and let's start adding some text to this file. And if you're following along using the instructions, you could just copy and paste. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. OK, so I've pasted in a bunch of text here. So all we have so far is, you know, just a bunch of text in a file. So let's save it and let's see what this looks like. And again, what we're doing here is we're saving the file. The way I did it here is I hit Control S. Another option you can do is you can hit File and then Save. And you could always see if there are pending changes waiting to be saved. It shows you right here one unsaved and you also have a little one that shows you the file you're working on and this little dot right here that it needs to be saved. So I'm going to save it. So now if I browse the location where we created the project, I can go to my documents, oops, my documents, I can go to choose to code, and there's that file I created. So let's double click on that file and see what comes up. So you'll notice here, there's just a bunch of text all thrown together. Even though in our Visual Studio Code, you know, you see that you have a title, you have a couple, you have a list here, you have a couple paragraphs and it's formatted okay. When you open it up in your browser, it's just all thrown together. So let's go ahead and let's add a bit of formatting. So I'm going to close this. First thing we're going to do is we are going to tell the document that what we are working with is an HTML document. So we're going to do that by add, adding in the following code. Doc type HTML. OK, so now the browser knows that this is going to be an HTML document. Most browsers will assume that it is HTML without this, but it's never a bad idea to set the expectation for the browser to view as an HTML file. Next, we'll need to tell the browser where the HTML starts and stops. So we use this by using tags. Opening tags look like this open bracket HTML close bracket 
and then we're going to add a closing bracket at the bottom and a closing bracket the only difference is there is a forward slash in front of whatever the tag name is so in this case it's open bracket forward slash HTML and so we're gonna put that at the end of the page so in other words what we're doing is we're telling the document that the HTML starts here and it ends here with the beginning and, and closing tag now that we have those tags we're gonna add what's called head content in now we don't have head content just yet so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add the open and closing tags for head so I just open bracket H E A D close bracket and then I'll do a forward slash and close out that one okay so now that we have the the, the head placeholder there so that we're gonna add header items in there we're gonna add what's called in the body tag and the body tag is used to tell the browser where the content for the page starts and stops. The, so the body of the page. So we're going to start the body tag right above our text. And then we're going to scroll down and we're going to close off our body tag right below where our text ends. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to highlight this text and I'm going to indent it using the tab key just so that this all looks good and it lines up nicely. And I'm going to save again. Next we want to set a number of the lines to be header lines. We do this using tags such as h1, h2, and so on through h6. The most top level is h1. The browser typically makes the h1 tag the largest and then through h2 3 4 5 6 a incrementally smaller and again it depends on the styles you set for which we'll go through in a, in a later lesson so while we're at it we're going to want to mark the paragraphs with a p tag the p tag basically tells again the browser where the paragraph starts and ends and it formats it accordingly this helps the browser to format these as individual paragraphs rather than creating one big long block of text like we saw earlier. So again, so we're going to use H1 tags and we're going to use P tags throughout it. So let's go through and we're going to mark up all this so that we can add some formatting. So I'm going to add an H1 tag around Visit Any Town USA because this is the title of our page. I'm going to go down to Amazing Museums. I'm going to add an H2 around this. So opening H2 tag, a closing H2 tag, because this is a subheading. This is not the most important heading. And then while we're at it, here's that each one of these lines is technically a paragraph. So I'm going to, in front of each one of these lines, I'm going to do an opening paragraph tag, and then I'm going to close the paragraph tag. So let's do that. So open paragraph Let's close that paragraph again. So we'll come down here again. We'll make this an H2. And we'll call these each one of these lines a paragraph. And this is an H2 as well. And this is a paragraph again. So now if I save the file, I'm going to save the file. And I'm going to go back to my documents and I'm going to double click on it to open it again. And look at that. You see it made the visit town any visit any town USA the largest item on the page because it is the heading and it separated each one of these paragraphs out and we have the subheadings above each one of them finally we have two lists that we want to work within the page the things to do list and the how to get here list we want to tell the browser that these each one of these are lists we have two types of lists we have ordered and unordered lists. 
an ordered list puts a numeric value at the beginning of each list item where unordered lists use as a graphic symbol to mark each list as an item. To create an ordered list, we use an OL tag. And for an unordered list, we use the UL tag. For both lists, each individual item is marked with an LI tag wrapped around it. So let's go ahead and let's do that here. So things to do, I'm going to give a heading, an H2 heading that we did earlier. And then I'm going to create my ordered list. So I have to tell the browser, start the ordered list here and end the ordered list here. And now each one of these items is a list item. So I'm going to wrap an LI tag around each one of these items. Okay, so I'm adding an LI tag around each one. And then again, I'm going to indent this with the tab key to make my code look good. And then we have one more list down here. And I'll make this one an unordered list. So I'll start my unordered list here. I'll end my unordered list here. Oops. And each one of these, and what I'll do is I'm just going to copy and paste. OK. So now that we've added our code for our ordered list and our unordered list, let's go back and see what the page looks like. So I'm going to go back and double click. And look at that. You'll see under things to do, we have one, two, three, four with our items. And if I scroll down for how to get here, we have by plane, train, automobile, and boat. Okay. Let's go ahead now and add some more information about your page. So let's give your page a title. Remember that head tag we put in early on? Let's go back and add another tag to tell your browser what to display in a window title. This will help us know which title is your web page. This time we're going to insert a title tag within the head tag. So if I do an open bracket title and let's call this my first web page. And again, a great feature about Visual Studio, if you just open up another bracket, it has IntelliSense so it knows that you want to close it. So you can either click on that title or you can hit the tab key and it will automatically do that ending closing title tag for you. So that's it. You've now turned a simple text file into your very first web page. So let's go ahead and let's browse again and let's open up the file. And if you'll see up here now, it says my first web page as the first title. So congratulations, you've turned a simple text file into your very first HTML web page. We are now ready to move on and learn how to add some more style and flair to your web page. This will come in the form of colors, images, and some formatting. So let's go ahead and do that.